Evo versus John Moxley for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship title in that lumberjack match at New Japan Pro Wrestling's Dominion on June 9th, 2024 is a huge disappointment. Very huge disappointment. And I didn't really go into this match with high expectations because let's face it, the story was there. The story was there. If you ever wanted to make a red hot baby face in John Moxley, the story was there. But because of poor planning and because of poor thought process and because Tony Khan wanted to keep John Moxley here in the States a little while longer to wrestle on AW Dynamite to show off the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship title as a prop to boost his ratings and maybe attendance records fucked everything up. Hi, welcome to a brand new episode of the Square Circle Podcast. I am your host, Marie Shadows. And on this episode, I will be diving into John Moxie versus Evil. And I will be defending Evil and House of Torture. I will be giving perspectives and opinions and maybe things to fix in the future. And we're going to talk about that backstage promo because I really believe that John Moxie just does it for himself. And while people in the comments may tell me that he is a team player and a locker room leader, I just don't see it. There's not enough to go on. There's not enough for me to believe that he truly cares. He just cares about going out there, entertaining the fans, having a really subpar match, saying whatever he wants on the mic and then goes home and then doesn't realize that it is a team effort for everyone involved. I've always said this professional wrestling is a team effort. It is not I. And they say that there is no I in team. And whoever coined that phrase is completely right. Without everyone and all hands on deck, including producers, including storytellers, including the wrestlers, the ring crew, every single body that has a job in professional wrestling that helps bring all of these events to life. It is all needed. It is all a team structure. But it just seems that there are areas where it comes to John Moxley that just misses the whole point of what a promo is and what to say in a promo and what to do in a match and how to quickly react. It's supposed to be professional wrestling for a reason. You're supposed to be a professional and not someone that just looks like or have a little chat during the match and expose certain things that wrestlers are not supposed to expose during a match. Matches are supposed to have a suspense of disbelief, but there's barely any suspense of disbelief when it comes to John Moxie matches. And the only reason why I may sound very frustrated is because nothing is being improved upon nothing. Like I cannot believe that on Twitter, Everyone is worshiping Moxley as if he's the next savior, the next coming of Jesus for New Japan Pro Wrestling. And New Japan Pro Wrestling has not really turned a profit with John Moxley being champion. Osaka Joe Hall had an attendance rating of 7K plus, 7,000 plus. That wasn't because of John Moxley versus Evil. And that definitely was not John Moxley on his own. That was all thanks to Best of the Super Juniors of having El Desperado versus Ishimori in the main event. And it's day and night when it comes to the fans chanting for their favorite wrestlers. I've explained on my show, the Square Circle podcast that you are listening to, I explained the audience differences between the towns that New Japan Pro Wrestling goes for. I always love watching the audience and I love hearing the fan reaction to wrestlers and you can really tell who's over. John Moxley is not over in Japan. Definitely not over. And that's not because he was put with House of Torture. House of Torture can have amazing, entertaining matches, even though I do agree that they go overboard with the shenanigans and it can get a bit annoying. This was in the past. But like I said, depending on where they're at in Japan, when they go on the tour, they do different things in terms of the shenanigans because different audiences are in different parts of japan 
in the city, like I said, those fans know about kayfabe but not to the extent of how American fans know about kayfabe. If they go out to the suburbs like Sendai and any of those areas, the wrestling fans are not as in tuned as the fans in the city of Japan. So they have to play up the shenanigans a little bit more in Sendai and other suburban areas in Japan. And if you want to go into the back catalog of my whole entire library, I have been entertained by House of Torture, even though I do agree that they can get annoying with their shenanigans. However, I do feel better when the payoff is there because House of Torture knows how to carry a story with all of their opponents. I have yet to really see something that has disappointed me. I've seen things that annoy me and frustrate me, but that's not the focus of me talking about the House of Torture matches from the past. That's just me knowing that it's going to get annoying. Oh, well, but is it going to be a payoff? Payoff? Yay, we cheer because there's a payoff because House of Torture is the villain in New Japan Pro Wrestling. And in every good superhero story, there needs to be that one dedicated villain that goes around attacking all the heroes. But at the end of the day, you know, at the end of that journey and that story, the villain is going to get his day and the hero is going to come out on top and you're going to feel really, really good that the hero, the guy you are cheering for, is going to become the winner. However, in this match, none of that happens. So the blame is going to go to everyone involved. I am not even going to be like, this is all Moxley's and Tony Khan's fault. Normally I would, and I'm being very honest with you because like I said, this is a one-sided partnership. We're watching this in real time. You know, right after Evil spray painted the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship title, a championship title that has a lineage of amazing, extraordinary athletes that held that championship title. Even though this is a brand new belt with a supposed brand new lineage, it doesn't matter. Those are the past that held it matters. This is a very prestigious belt for New Japan Pro Wrestling. This is their moneymaker, their bread and butter. So evil comes in and evil wants to be evil. He spray paints the championship title. Why the fuck did John Moxley did not get upset at this? Why no one else got upset at that to help Moxley with the story and have him come in in very a heated mode to be like how dare you desecrate something so special and you want to hold it you are not worthy to hold it evil because you have no respect and the office doesn't really trust you with it so they gave it to me a leader and i will bring new japan pro wrestling into the light and vanquish evil from New Japan Pro Wrestling, so he never gets a shot at this IWGP Championship title as long as I'm holding it. Why can Moxie give us a story like that? That will get people behind Moxie, and I wouldn't be so frustrated with Moxley's booking because this guy doesn't think about the story, the character, the motivation, even if he's not playing a character. You're still there. Your name is John Moxley. It's not really your real name, so you kind of are playing a character but the point remains that why are you not doing enough it's like you're putting in 40 percent to just be there and not do anything else while evil over here does everything in the book to get heat to get the fans to hate him to get the fans to hate house of torture to the point where someone will step up and be like evil we've had enough and we're gonna beat your ass and that has happened in the past where evil and house of torture have lost and again we celebrated but i'm seeing a lot of worshiping tweets around twitter as if john moxie is the savior of new japan pro wrestling guys remember he is an aew contracted star he is not part of New Japan Pro Wrestling. He's on a handshake deal, and that's not good. If I was New Japan Pro Wrestling, I would have have him sign a mini little contract with a little extra pay for the appearances because it is only right. But I will say in that contract, you have to come to these dates to fulfill your obligation as IWGP champion until you lose it, and then this contract is null and void. That's how you avoid mistakes and accidents and no shows but 
it seems like New Japan Pro Wrestling doesn't learn from the past. New Japan Pro Wrestling does not learn from the wrestling history. Like everything has to be contracts. Just because anybody can give you their word, it does not mean that it's always going to be fulfilled. Now, if life suddenly happens and unfortunate shit happens, then that's a case by case basis. But for the most part, you want to protect your ass because anybody can say something and then turn around and do something else. Okay, now onto this match and why it's so disappointing. Normally, before I get into the match, I would tell you guys to like, share, comment, give me your thoughts. I will be answering people's comments in the comment section below on YouTube. If you're over on the Spotify episode, go answer the q a and poll questions and i will respond to those as well and then also like and subscribe to the youtube channel youtube.com forward slash square circle podcast and everything else will be down in the description below for all of my links for anywhere to help me out but this will be free to listen because i want to have really good conversations and not emotional conversations really good factual conversations, perspective conversations, maybe some opinion stuff, but you guys got to keep it civil. That's all I got to say. And also subscribe to my newsletter, marieshadows.substack.com. There's a lot more wrestling content on the newsletter as well that will help me out. Now, let's get into this disappointing match. What I don't like is that they use the lumberjack gimmick because it's a crutch. Because both sides did not want to do any kind of story. Evil wants to do story. Evil understands the importance of having story. Moxley doesn't know what story is at this point. Because he just wants to go in, beat up, and like leave. And that's it. And it's like, you can only do that for so long. Until the gimmick is up. Until the aura and the mystique is up. And then we can see all of the bad stuff that gets covered up so much i really do think that john moxie was the weakest link in the shield i really really do so before this match even begins here is evil again playing into story because if you guys don't know tanahashi kadani and matsumoto held a mini little press conference that outlined 10 steps for the growth of New Japan Pro Wrestling, which, by the way, I need Tanahashi and New Japan Pro Wrestling management to start implementing and taking action because words can only go so far. Action is a lot more better because it proves that you are listening, you're thinking, and you really do want the improvement of New Japan Pro Wrestling. And I did cover that press conference not too long ago on my channel, so go check it out if you have not checked that out yet. In that press conference, they talked about how House of Torture does a lot of interference and interference this and interference that in professional wrestling. We know that professional wrestling is always going to have interference. It's been a thing always. You can't really stop it. If you eliminate it too much, things are going to be boring. However, like I said, wrestling fans are sensitive and they see things on the surface level. They don't see anything below surface level and they want to continue to spread the fact that House of Torture is annoying, House of Torture is this, House of Torture is that, without realizing, depending on where they go and the audience that they are in front of performing in their match they're going to get different reactions. They're going to have different shenanigans play up or play down, you know. So one of the 10 steps was to limit the interference by House of Torture somehow. And of course, evil does not like this because essentially you take away what House of Torture is. Again, I will say this throughout the whole entire podcast, even though like I am defending House of Torture because they do need some defense the shenanigans can get overwhelming, can get frustrating, and can get exaggerated. But again, it is where they are performing at is the reason why this happens. Plus, I will state again that Jado Gato 
and Dick Togo were all in ECW. So they learned from ECW how to get heat, how to cheat, how to do all of the shenanigans that we see them do today. And wrestling fans don't want to understand that or accept that because no one has tried to challenge me on this knowledge that I have about ECW and the three going there and the shenanigans in the audience and all that kind of stuff. I'm just saying that like, if you're going to continue to push that house of torture is bad, no matter what, you're not helping the wrestling community. You're not helping new Japan pro wrestling because you have to understand that wrestling is entertainment at the end of the day. And while yes, it can get annoying and frustrating, but tweets that just stop the conversation on how to fix the shenanigans is not going to be beneficial for anybody. So for example, if Everyone in the NJPW community keeps saying that House of Torture is bad, House of Torture is shit, House of Torture is this and that. Without understanding why they do it, we're not going to get a resolution as to how to fix the shenanigans, which is overblown that House of Torture does. There's a way to talk about it to make New Japan Pro Wrestling realize you guys might have to scale it down a bit for the shenanigans and do shenanigans smartly. And not so frequently. That is how you open up a conversation by fixing something that you find frustrating and I find frustrating with you. But I'm offering extra knowledge so that way when you do tweet out about House of Torture and how frustrated you are, you can frame your tweet a little bit more intelligent. So that way New Japan Pro Wrestling doesn't think, oh, we should eliminate House of Torture completely. Because House of Torture is still the best, only good villains around. I cannot count Bullet Club as villains in this very moment. To be true villains is to be House of Torture. I just really want to put that out there because fans need to understand there is more to this than just House of Torture bad. Or like John Moxie likes to say, everyone is fed up with your bullshit. Like, we get it, dude. We get that House of Torture does a lot of bullshit things. But again, that stops conversation. We're not supposed to stop conversation if we want to make wrestling better. If you want to progress wrestling forward you don't stop the conversation and that is what i like to do on this podcast throughout the whole entire episode is not to stop conversation so let's not stop conversation about that so even before this match actually gets underway evil goes and confronts kadani kadani stands up they are face to face they are staring each other down because again Evil does not like the fact that in the 10 step plan that they want to limit House of Torture and their shenanigans because fans want to complain in a very sensitive way, not in any intelligent way. So Evil is taking that as you're trying to stop House of Torture. And then all of a sudden, Evil takes out a spray paint bottle and sprays Kidani in the face. Like, full-blown, he has now a black, spray-painted face. This is equivalent to the NWO days, where they took the spray paint and spray-painted whatever the hell they wanted and really did not give a shit. However, I really wasn't expecting Kadani to be so calm. Kadani could have showed a little bit of enragement, a little bit selling, because he just got spray-painted with black color on his face completely all over his face and there was not an ounce of selling which i think was very missed and then we have john moxie come out with his music come out to the crowd and by the way i did see a tweet going around saying that john moxie is so over in japan no he isn't john moxie coming out through the crowd anybody's gonna get excited any fan is gonna get excited you got to think about it like the ratings the lead-in to AEW dynamite is the big bang theory that gives AEW its boost in the first 30 minutes or so and then everybody leaves because they either have to do something in life or they want to watch something else and every other segment on AEW dynamite on wednesdays dip that's exactly what happened with John Moxie and his crew. No one in Osaka really gave a shit about the third generation and John Moxie 
and Shota because after the whole big crowd cheering, when he comes through the crowd, that's it. It got quiet. There wasn't much a reaction throughout this match. There might have been a little bit of reactions here and there, but maybe like three times. And that was when Evo and House of Torture was getting beat up, which is to be expected. It's to be expected. However, consistently throughout the match, Moxley needed to do that rah-rah kind of bullshit to try to get something from the crowd because the crowd was not into this match. And again, it is not because of evil. It is not 100% evil's fault. It is on both of their faults and everyone else involved because the Japanese crowd just wasn't into it. If you don't give reason to the Japanese crowd because they are very simple fans. They really are. You give them story, you give them your heart, your soul, your blood, sweat, and tears, and you give them your story. They want to connect with you through story. There's a reason why El Desperado and Ishimori had a better reaction from start to finish from the crowd than Evil and Moxley. There's a reason why Hinare and Shingo had a standing ovation and the crowd in the palm of their hands from start to finish. And Evil and Moxley had shit. They had nothing. They had maybe like three pops as most. Three and a half if you want to count John Moxley's entrance, which doesn't really count. It will be the same thing about Jey Uso. Jey Uso coming through the crowd is great. It's hype. It's awesome. You're seeing Jey Uso there. You're like, oh my God, you're starstruck. That is what Japanese fans tend to do in Japan. They are very respectful. The ones that attend the show, they're very respectful. And because they are very respectful, they are also shy. So if they see a celebrity... Most of the time, they won't even go up to them. They'll just probably like stare and giggle until you acknowledge them. And then you make it feel comfortable for them to approach you. And you make it feel comfortable for them to interact with you if you are that celebrity that they're gushing over. So that is what Japanese fans do. They're very respectful to celebrities. And if they don't really know you as much, you're probably not going to get much out of the fam but when they do know you they're very respectful of your time and what you can do for them and that's how they are they're very nice people they are they're very nice osaka has a mixture of older men and women with children in there as well as maybe some young folk as well so osaka you get a blend of different kind of fans however it still remains that if they are quiet, normally, and yes, we'll say that they're being respectful and you're doing something right if they are quiet, that still stands. However, you can tell the difference between really two good wrestlers who give it their all and give the Japanese fans the story for them to follow versus let's just do a quick lumberjack match, no story, whatever come here let's get the match done that's it so fan reaction is very important in new japan pro wrestling to see who's over and not over i can tell you for a fact that bullet club war dogs dan maloney and clark connors has had the most meet and greets with japanese fans and their lines wrap around that says a lot okay back to the match because I do have notes. You know, I actually thought that Moxie was going to do something different, something smart. He starts attacking Evo's arm, working on a body part. If you're new here, I love to always say that if you work on a body part and you end up doing a submission, you might end up getting a victory from that. Working on a body part, it's a smart thing to do. It's called psychology. If you're not new here, you guys already know. So I thought that we were going to get something new from John Moxley. Oh, no. How stupid of me. We're not. So Moxley forgets to continue to work on uh, Evil's arm. And Evil is selling it. Evil is giving him 100% while Moxley here forgets about it and moves on to something else. 
and does this elbow and kick combination. So instead of doing the rapid elbows to the side of the guy's like neck, it's one elbow, one kick combo. And I was like, what's the point of that? You are exerting so much energy when you could just be doing the elbows and then turn around and try to do a cross face next as the next sequence. But no, never mind. Then it's also very fitted to know that Chris Charlton on commentary did say that John Moxley is an AEW wrestler. So there it goes. So as Moxley forgets to continue to work on Evil's arm, he suddenly applies a figure four leg lock. Why? Why do you apply a figure four leg lock when it does not make sense in any of the sequences that you were doing? The first opening of this match, it just felt like I'm going to do something smart psychology wise and then i'm just gonna fuck it the rules don't apply we're not gonna do psychology so i don't understand why he went for a figure four leg lock obviously evil makes it to the rope so that causes a rope break and a little bit later in the match evil goes for the nagata lock because nagata is outside the ring in the lumberjack match so just to throw some evil his way for the lack of a better phrase at this very moment as Evil is applying the Nagata lock, Moxley is just looking up at the lights, have his hands up, looking at what's happening, not even selling, not even trying to squirm or claw or scratch at Evil's legs to show that you don't want to be in this submission. No, you just take it. And then once it's applied, you're doing the most fakest, exaggerated selling I have ever seen. That is not believable. Not believable to the point that fans are not even cheering. They're not even booing. And usually they'll boo at evil for doing something disrespectful as taking the Nagata lock from Nagata and applying it to his opponent. And the fans would be like, oh, that's a disrespectful thing. That's not loyalty or whatever. They would be booing. But nobody, no crowd reaction. And here comes Moxie trying to will some type of reaction from the crowd and nothing. Nothing. We got a rope break. Like, come on, you know how to wrestle, right? You know how to sell and do all these things, right? Like, I should not be calling this out. For someone who's a veteran and who had the WWE training as well, I shouldn't be calling this out. This should be simple. You should be selling. You should be really having the crowd believe in you that evil is the most evil person of all things, the, the villain that is going to take over New Japan and bring New Japan into darkness. And that while he's putting the Nagata lock on you, you need to get out. It needs to look like a struggle. It needs to look like you are presently there rather than being like, all right, cool. When's my spot? All right, one, two. All right, cool. I get to reverse. All right, cool. You fucked up. Well, why the fuck did you fuck up? You know, let's do some strikes. This is what John Moxie does in his matches and none of it is spectacular. And we could see through the bullshit that he claims other people do, but he's doing more of the bullshit. Like, can you have a nice seamless match? A wrestling match, not no match where you can always rely on weapons because later on in the match, he does take out the barbed wire bat and uses it on everybody. But I am getting ahead of myself because these are the things that bother me during a match. It's like there's no rhyme or reason because he wants to go super fast to get to the weapons and think that that's very good for the fans to follow. It really isn't. There is a pacing that has to be in these matches. There's story that has to be in these matches, which most wrestlers are forgetting that there is storytelling inside the ring as well. When you have a wrestling match, it's not just the promos and the outside stuff. It's a lot of things combined. So I am getting ahead of myself, but we will revisit the baseball bar wire bat. So after John Moxley gets the rope break and Evil releases the hold, which usually Evil likes to play around and be like, ref, I can't do it. Or, you know, just some stupid shit to kind of get like the ref going one, two, three, four, before five kind of thing. But luckily, Evil was like, all right, cool. We'll just break it off. Here comes Moxley selling his fucking leg as if like it was being attacked the whole entire time. Then the Nagata lock added more pressure to it. So it hurts. No, 
He just put you in the leg lock. Why are you selling your leg like, oh my God, it extremely hurts. But throughout the whole entire match, you're able to stand on it. Like the psychology behind it gets me so fucking upset. It really does. It may sound like I'm upset. I'm just really frustrated. It's like you are the professional. What are you doing? It is not believable that after one leg submission, oh my God, my leg hurts so bad. But 10 minutes later, you're able to walk on it and run and strike and do whatever you want to do because you forget about it. Like, why? And now because John Moxley is selling this leg so poorly, we get a chop exchange from the both of them. And I'm like, guys, it's not even like halfway through the match. New Japan Pro Wrestling has this formula of when you know the chop exchange is going to happen, it's halfway through the match, or we're getting towards the end of the match and they end up doing a chop exchange, a forearm exchange. But I'm just like, guys, nothing fucking happened. And you guys are doing a test of strength of a forearm and chop exchange right now? Nothing happened. Nothing substantial happens in the 40 minutes, really. The only cool thing that happens is this smooth looking discus lariat that evil gives to Moxley in the corner. But of course, Moxley has to come through with a lariat, right? Of course he does. Now we're at a double down, which, by the way, double downs in a wrestling match are now a pet peeve of mine where I'm like, there's a time and place for a double down. Just don't do it frequently. Don't overdo it. As the referee counts during this match because both men are down, Evil rolls out to the House of Torture side and is protected by the House of Torture members. And this is where they miss the opportunity to have an all-out fight. Even though it came later, they could have started it now between third generation and House of Torture. Why does Moxie have to come into a Tope Suicida to hit Evil and House of Torture? Again, to no reaction. To the crowd, from the crowd. No reaction at all. Why? The better psychology move would have been the third generation getting in there because this is a pretty serious matter. Third generation does not like evil. Evil has been terrorizing New Japan Pro Wrestling forever. And third generation is just gonna stand there and let the House of Torture guys protect their main man when. You guys realize it's a lumberjack match. That means that there are no rules. That means that you could go and beat the shit out of somebody with whatever and you'll be okay. Like nobody's going to get disqualified. So even though I know later on they're going to have this really bad WWE style, everyone get your shit in kind of go home before the pay-per-view battle royale style thing. They could have started it there. So that way the fans could be into it. The fans wanted to be into this match, but it really was not there at all because of the way that it was structured, the pacing and not doing much and making it look like they were doing a lot. And it really wasn't. Another thing I liked because I really wasn't expecting it was Dick Togo came around and threw powder into the eyes of John Moxley. And then... Evil does his signature baseball chair swing. And of course, Moxley had to reposition and the camera caught it. Like, I get it, dude. Other wrestlers have done that too to reposition it. But there's a way to do it without making it so obvious. Like 90% obvious. So obvious, man. You know what could have been good in this situation at this very moment because we as the fans know that powder got thrown in john moxie's eyes and then evil hits moxie with the chair as like a baseball swing he should be down there should be some time evil should be taunting the fans the fans should be reacting to that taunt and somebody from third generation should be grabbing a bottle of water going over to john moxley and putting it on his face to wipe away the powder there are levels to this as making it the best match that it can be for the semi-main event and it just seems like 
nobody in the back was talking to each other about how the match should go. If they knew that Dick Togo was going to have a spot where he takes the powder and throw it in John Moxie's eye, they would have been like somebody from third generation is going to grab a water bottle and clean off Moxley's eyes because throwing powder in anyone's eyes is going to burn and you're going to scream and you're going to be like, I need a towel. I need water. Why didn't that not happen? Then that would have gotten the fans emotionally invested because now in kayfabe, John Moxie is blind and that means that he might end up losing the championship title. And if he was so over, like how the internet wants you to believe that he's so over, it will make a lot more sense for people to be like, oh shit, no, I don't want his title reign to end. I don't want evil to get it because I have to believe that he is currently blinded or half blinded. So someone go fucking help him and clear his eyes. But no, nobody thought about that. No one thought about that or talked about it. And that is a missed opportunity for having storytelling in a wrestling match. This is the kind of things that make or break a match is the little details that matter and not commentary really worshiping the shit out of John Moxley and trying to tear down House of Torture. I get it. They're supposed to build emotion for the people watching at home and listening. But please do not go down the Kevin Kelly route of really destroying House of Torture because we need House of Torture in New Japan Pro Wrestling because they are the villains of all villains. And you need a good villain for a good hero in order to make money, in order to increase merchandise, in order to get sponsors, in order to get a lot of things. There's a lot of moving parts, but it doesn't seem like nobody wants to pay attention to all the moving parts and want to eliminate something that will eventually hurt New Japan Pro Wrestling in the future. We get a top rope superplex by Evil to John Moxley. Of course, John Moxley kicks out of this. Then Evil puts the Anaconda Vice onto Moxley. Again, this is supposed to be Evil getting a rise out of Tenzon because it's disrespectful to do another wrestler's finisher hold in New Japan Pro Wrestling sometimes. And what does Evil do? Evil does what Evil does. And so he did that. And then all of a sudden, we get a reversal. This reversal was the most weirdest shit I've seen. It wasn't even that smooth. And then John Moxie ends up putting the sleeper on evil. How are you putting a reverse sleeper on evil after getting out of the Anaconda Vice? The Anaconda Vice puts pressure on your head, your neck, and for you to breathe. It is a submission that you tap to when you're like, I can live another day. You're supposed to be disoriented. You're already breathing heavy because you are in this match going back and forth trying to hit power moves. So the Anaconda Vice should be weakening you a little bit more because you have to draw out a lot more breath. You have to expel a lot more energy in order to get evil who's fucking big and heavy off of you as well because he's also laying on you to apply this move and then all of a sudden you're going to reverse it into a sleeper how do you have enough wherewithal to do that how do you have enough energy to know that oh the sleeper is the best next thing like no it's not that transition was horrible then we get to a referee spot which i really don't like I don't like referee bumps at all, especially when it comes to House of Torture matches. But this one, man, again, no thought process in this whole entire match. So Evil grabs on to Marty. And if you don't know, the real match should be Evil versus Marty Asami, who is the referee. That should be the biggest match to draw in New Japan Pro Wrestling just because of the history. Every time there's a House of Torture match, Marty is always the referee. If it's not Marty, it's Red Shoes. And if it's not Red Shoes, it's one of the newer guys and they get taken advantage of. And then New Japan sees this and they're like, oh, it doesn't hit the same. So let's keep Marty Asami with Evil because... It just works really well, but for a future Wrestle Kingdom, I'm going to need Marty Asami, the NJPW referee, versus Evil of House of Torture. That will sell tickets, trust me, because that history there is so deep, is so long. 
no puns intended get your mind out of the gutter okay so evil grabs onto marty asami marty breaks evil's grip and then proceeds to slap evil but evil ducks at the last second and marty slaps moxley this enrages moxley for moxley to go after marty asami when it was a fucking accident and takes him by the collar and gets really angry with him and i'm like aren't you supposed to be the big hot red baby face and you're doing this to the official and you should know it's an accident because evil moved and you couldn't really calculate it so like why are you doing anti baby face things when you're supposed to be the baby face that saves new japan pro wrestling from evil i I just don't get it. It made no sense in that very moment for him to slap Marty. Now, somebody could definitely tell me that it was in the moment. He was in rage and all this kind of shit. I get that. But you are a baby face. Evil is a heel. In New Japan Pro Wrestling, there are clear cut characters. There are baby faces and there are heels. They may be a couple of anti-wrestlers, anti-heel, babyface kind of thing. But for the most part, it is heel and it is babyface. You have to follow that. This isn't AEW where it's a free-for-all and nobody knows what the fuck is going on. That's why I did not like this spot. Normally, I don't care about ref bumps. They are so overdone with House of Torture and New Japan Pro Wrestling and wrestling in general that it has become so predictable where I'm like, does it really matter at this point that we have a ref bump? No, it does not. But in this instance, John Moxley is supposed to be the baby face. This is why he's not over because the fans don't really know what the fuck he is. And if the wrestling fans don't know what he is, I should say Japanese wrestling fans. If they don't understand what he is, he's not going to get the reaction. And the reaction is not there. And like I said, it's only been like three and a half times where there was a reaction, but not too big of a reaction. So after that happens, we get Evil taking advantage of Moxie at this point, having the upper hand. Moxie does that stupid hawk up shit that doesn't get nobody behind him. Now we have the WWE style get your shit in with the Lumberjacks coming in to help. We have Nagata accidentally hitting Marty Asami again. We have the Lumberjacks fighting. We have the Death Rider finisher happening in this big chaotic thing. Show comes in with the push-up bar. And then they do the shield-like powerbomb to John Moxley through the table. Now... Before this, let's walk back a little bit. John Moxley was focusing on show. Here comes Evil to do a really huge low blow. And instead of Moxley rolling out to the other side of the ring, not where the table is at, but the other side of the ring to lay there, be in agony, and have the House of Torture guys drag him over to the table. No, in his mind, he's like, okay, I just got low blowed. What's next in the choreography? Oh, that's right. I have to go through a table. So I'm going to roll out to the table to make it fucking obvious that the guys have to do this power bomb through a table and I'm going to lay there. And I'm like, it's a lot more better if there was a fight, a drag, where if he got out of the ring on the other side, people would have brought him over. And that's how you do it in a story because he's already hurt. So why not drag him over to where you need him to be rather than him rolling to the spot? Now, I will say this about New Japan Pro Wrestling and wrestling in general. There have been times where if someone takes out a table, it is predictable that you know that a spot is going to happen. However, you do not know how we're going to get to that spot. They might tease you along the way to be like, oh, it's going to happen now. Oh, no, false. It's not going to happen. And then maybe like 15 minutes later, oh, is it going to happen now? No, it's not. And then they wait for the right time for it to happen. And with better camera positioning, with better thought process on how to get to that table spot, it just feels so much better. In this match, when the table is brought out, I was like, okay, we're going to have a table spot, but I don't know who's going to go in it. 
as soon as John Moxley rolls right to the table, I automatically knew it was going to be John Moxley. Like, sir, roll the other way out of the ring so you can be pulled over to the table. And then the shield-like powerbomb can happen. And yet Moxley wants to say that he was sleeping during that WWE pay-per-view where they played the Shield theme song at WrestleMania and everybody popped for it. And he's like, no, nah, I was sleeping. No, nah, I wasn't watching. But yet then in New Japan Pro Wrestling, you tell Evil to do a Shield-like powerbomb through a table. That just says a lot. It really does. Like, nothing adds up. There's no rhyme or reason. There's no conviction. There's... It's all hell break loose, no rules, I do what I want, there's no continuity, there's just, oh my god, fans will pop for a shield, powerbomb. The Japanese fans are not going to know that having the three guys there and then like powerbombing John Moxley through the table, it's a shield reference or could be a shield reference. Like no Japanese fan is going to know because... Only now are they getting reintroduced to WWE programming because WWE has media rights in Japan on the Wrestle Universe subscription site, I believe. And they get the pay-per-views that we get over here as well. So Japanese fans are now getting reintroduced to WWE wrestling. And it is very good to report that in July, WWE will be over in Japan for the summer and WWE has sold out in Japan. So I really need New Japan Pro Wrestling to talk to WWE to help them out because, man, it's night and day. So after putting Mox to the table, they bring him back into the ring and Evil does the Death Rider. But Moxley kicks out because Moxley just kicks out or whatever. He just went through a real table from New Japan Pro Wrestling. New Japan Pro Wrestling does not have any props. They don't have breakable tables like WWE and all other wrestling promotions out here in the States. New Japan Pro Wrestling has real deal tables. So I don't know how Moxie kicks out of that. Like that should have been it. Evil should have won at that point. Then Moxley ends up doing everything is evil to evil and kicks out and then we have the barbed wire baseball bat returning and evil gets hit with it we get the curb stomp and then we get the death rider moxley goes over to cover evil one two three mox retains in a very mox way that doesn't really do much at all the fans i guess they cheer i don't really remember but it still was like no one knew what was going on. And then Mox ends up asking for the microphone and starts talking and wanting the next challenger for Forbidden Door because he just wants to call out challengers and have challengers and have challengers. But that does not build the prestige of the IWGP championship title the way that he thinks it does. Just because you could have so many matches in such a short amount of time, it does nothing to raise the prestige of any championship title belt. You have to either follow the story structure that makes a lot of sense to slow down for people to digest what you're doing because Japanese fans just needs a little bit more time. They don't move as fast as the rest of the world. They don't move as fast as Americans so you have to go to their pace but you could also keep it moderate pace as well but no John Moxley is like who's my next opponent blah blah blah, blah. so here comes Naito and everybody cheered for Naito everybody was like yeah it's Naito like a full on cheering for Naito and Moxley is like oh okay so Naito tells the fans that it is his fault that he lost the belt in the first place. First of all, do not apologize because we all know that that was Tony's doing. At Windy City Riot, when it was Naito versus Moxley, Naito came up and hit Moxley in the head with the chair as he was about to do the, the Tope Suicida. And there was a look on Naito's face where you knew that when he had to lay down and give Moxie the belt, he didn't want to. Like, you knew. And we can see that looking back at it. So anyway, 
Naito chooses to fight Mox. It's on at Forbidden Door. It's going to be Naito versus Moxley. And Naito better take the belt back because New Japan Pro Wrestling is not founded on having subpar matches, having sloppy matches, having lazy matches. There is an exception to every rule, every situation, and I totally get that. But if you are a professional and a veteran, you should not be this bad in matches. You really shouldn't. And by the way, nobody else that does this kind of style that Mox does has gotten so much praise. When was the last time that we blindly praise Mick Foley, Sandman, Terry Funk? We haven't really done that. But for Mox, he gets delusional praise. And when I break down his matches, because I'm an analytical wrestling fan who also works in the business... I can tell the difference between someone who's really good and polished and someone that just doesn't care anymore. You have to care about the craft in order for you to get this praise that other people should be getting. It doesn't make any sense. Why do we praise subpar things, but then are really hard on people who are polished? Why? That's backwards. Moxley just needs to improve. That's all that he needs to do. And there has been no improvement. He goes from match to match to match. He has promos that don't make sense. He has this attitude of that he could take on the whole world. And that's great because it could be used in a good and bad way. But the planning, the planning is not there. The creativeness is not there. And the weakness is very showing, very telling. And I'm reviewing this match because I like New Japan Pro Wrestling. New Japan Pro Wrestling is very different from any other kind of wrestling company with how they go about and how they do things. And there is a structure there. It is not bad to follow a structure. It really isn't. For someone like Moxie that does not want to follow any rules, then it's going to be shit. It really is. Aside from that, this was very disappointing. Like I said, very, very disappointing. And if you think that me complaining about Moxie over and over and over again is somehow not a good thing, it is. Because I'm the only one calling it out, aside from Jerk Cornette and other people. But if you think that that's, a, that's not a good thing, then you don't want the wrestler to improve. You don't want wrestling to improve. And my content is all about making sure wrestling improves and progresses further. Like I said, we're seeing this all in real time. My purpose is just to teach wrestling. I really don't like using the word educate people. I really don't because to me that sounds condescending. And I rather us together in a community learn a little bit more about wrestling, be a little bit smarter about wrestling and Understand that when you see something as sloppy and something that does not make sense to connect the dots, it takes you out of the match and you're not believing evil and you're not believing John Moxley and the aura is gone, the presentation is gone, the structure is gone. Wrestling needs a structure. Wrestling is a play. Wrestling has this fundamental element that makes it so unique. And it's on fire lately. WWE is doing a very good job of this. Sometimes being simple gives a lot more satisfaction and wholesomeness to the audience for them to go home to. Luckily, the best of the Super Juniors of Ishimori versus El Desperado, that was great. That felt awesome. Everything was on point. There was psychology. It made sense. It was fantastic. It was perfect. This match between Evil and Moxie could have set a different kind of standard, a different kind of psychology, but it was nothing because, again, the story wasn't there. Evil and House of Torture always gives 110% to whatever they are told to do, even if it's cringy, even if it's lame, even if it's shenanigans. They put their heart and soul into providing the story and you believe them that's why fans get up in arms and be like i can't take this anymore it's so frustrating they're so bad is because they make you believe 
what the fuck does John Moxley make you believe? He really doesn't make you believe anything. Because if you try to live the John Moxley way of not listening to any rules and be this anarchy and try to be this tough person in life, it's not going to work out. If there was no rules at all, everything would be in anarchy and us as a human race will not be around. We were all we would have died a long time ago because you still need rules. You still need regulations. You still need some type of structure. And that's just what it is. We work best in a structure. Again, there is lots of gray area to that statement. But generally speaking, to where we are today versus caveman days let's say we did it together as a unit and as unity together we did it together to form what we have and that's what I think is missing when I talk about John Moxie because it doesn't look like he's mentally there in wrestling it just looks like he's going through the motions and, and just being there because wrestling makes him feel alive. Imagine if he did slow down and didn't wrestle. He'll probably be like on hikes or anything like personal in his life. But this isn't to bring up his personal life. But just the idea of like him not being in wrestling, he wouldn't know what to do with himself. And this causes when you do not take a vacation, this causes a mode in your brain to switch on of like you got to go 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 he should be resting at this point he should be relaxing at this point because the matches he's in the promos he does there is nothing connecting nothing's making sense and it's just like he's just here while you can tell in other wrestlers that they are mentally good to still be in wrestling and to still keep on going on their journey and even though their bodies are probably tired they are present there we go John Moxie does not look like he's in the present when he is doing wrestling through and through it's like he goes out there he has a match he knows he has a promo he knows he has to follow the choreographed steps he knows he has to count this count that bam and nothing feels organic nothing feels smooth it just feels like he's there and that's it and he's not really present while wow. other wrestlers that I have watched and study and can see the consistency in their character, despite having a tired body, an exhausted body, mentally, they are in the present in professional wrestling. So that's what I wanted to bring up. And by me pointing out this stuff about John Moxley is just because I want him to improve but nobody wants to believe that because they think that this is hating. They think that giving constructive criticism is hating when in reality, it is not hating at all. It is wanting someone to improve. Just imagine one of your loved ones, if you want them to improve, wouldn't you want to have a heart to heart talk with that person for them to improve? Because you can see from a mile away that it's not working. Whatever the situation is, that's all I want from John Moxley. I do not hate John Moxley. I don't know him personally, but if you're going to be inside the square circle, if you're going to be a professional, a professional wrestler, you got to be a professional wrestler. You got to be on your A game. You got to be at the top. In every single one of his promos, he's like, I'm at the top. I blah, 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 all this kind of shit, right? If he keeps saying that he's at the top and he made it to the very top and he made it to the very edge and he understands New Japan Pro Wrestling better than anyone else, which is a lie. But for the sake of this, if he believes all of that, how come I don't believe it? How come I don't think that he believes it himself and he just says it just to say it? It's empty words. And I just like making sure that wrestlers whether they are veterans they're new they're seasoned can improve all around because i care i honestly care all right ladies and gentlemen this is my review of evil versus john moxley again this is me not hating john moxley at all it is not all i want is for him to improve and for him to get better because Evil versus Moxie could have been a hundred times better where the payoff would have been there. Everything would have made sense. But because of poor planning and because there was barely any story, it started off with a hot intro and then it just dipped 
and then nothing. So now we're just like, okay, this is what we got. And it was bad. It was disappointing. And we cannot have that in New Japan Pro Wrestling. There is a standard in New Japan Pro Wrestling. And that should not really be allowed. All right, guys. If you enjoyed this episode, share it out, comment. And I hope that my perspectives and my opinions and everything that I said here make sense for why it was frustrating. There was just no thought process at all. And... I think we have to stop telling the internet world that John Moxie is over in Japan when he is not over in Japan. He's not as over as you think he is. He has a good size amount of fans, but it is night and day when all the other wrestlers come out and all the other wrestlers get standing ovations and a consistent boos and cheerings and calling out the wrestler's name from start to finish in a match. It's, it's night and day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening and support me further by going down to the description box below and clicking on all my links. And that's where you can interact with me. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to this episode of the Square Circle Podcast. And I'll see you guys on the next one.